Okay. Uh, Amesbury FM coming at you. 26th of July. It's a Sunday of 2020. Um, this is a response to Anna Bree's appeal for people to share how they feel about, you know, some of the things that have been going on this year. Um, as I record this, there are five, there have been five contributions from, from different people. Um, and there seem to be, you know, some common elements in some of the accounts. So people are worried about the future. They don't believe the official accounts. You know, one of the more striking contributions so far is from a guy called Steve from the West Midlands. Who, who, he basically screams for two minutes, <laughs> quietly. Um, he says, I know it's wrong. It's sinister, it's dark. These are the kinds of words he was using. Um, I don't know what to do. You know, it it seems to him as though he's the only one in a world <laughs> where everybody's gone insane and he's the only one that hasn't. And, of course, that's scary, you know. I feel a bit like that sometimes. And so if you're out there, Steve, um, you know, I feel you. I do understand that, you know. And it would appear that there are at least four others and hopefully more to come. Um, one of one of the uh, requests is that we the contributors explain who they are, where they come from, what they do. Well, it's Amesbury FM, so that explains that. Um, I'm actually at the mothership now. I haven't gone out to the actual radio station. Uh, it's kind of overcast right now. And frankly, I'm disinclined to go out, really, unless it's somewhere where there aren't people around. So that gives you some idea of how I feel about it. Um, what do I do? Well, there's the question now. Because before all this, I used to play music to people. Since... All of this started, well, for the first month or two, I was recording an album anyway, remotely. So that kind of kept my mind off things. But now that I've basically finished recording on my parts for that, um, I've started doing presentations like this. And the goal is to explain to people the the potential of that the world has to offer the world of human affairs in such areas as the arts culture science you know those sorts of things and then there are more of those to come plus there are a few play along videos that I that I do which take a bit of work but you know but it's a fun train to ride so long as YouTube doesn't block you worldwide because of copyright. So I've had that happen in the past. Um, and so this is what I've taken to do now. Um, there are content creators that directly address the issues as they come up. Um, my goal is to be a bit more oblique in the way that I deal with this. Every... Everything I do is designed to uh, obliquely deal with the issue um, in a way that it doesn't seem obvious to the person watching that it's doing so. 
And perhaps I'm letting the cat out, cat out of the bag now. Um, but this probably won't go up on my channel anyway. And you have permission to publish it if I figure out a way to get it to you. Or if you think it's any good. Um, so I think that addresses the question of what I do right now. I don't know is the answer. I don't know any more than Steve knows. Um, and so that's where we all are. We don't know what to do. We're very much afraid that the world that is coming into existence is not going to be one that is a better world for our children than it was for us. And that's what most parents want for their children, isn't it? A world that's better. But at least one person has expressed a fear that, you know, if they submit to con uh, track and trace and all this kind of thing, they might have social services round to take their children away. And that rarely ever ends up well. You know, it takes a pretty dysfunctional family to be worse for a child's upbringing than, than the state alternative, let's put it that way. So, how do I feel? Well, I feel very much like that. I think it's scary. There's an uncertainty about the future. But I'm also indignant and angry about the vandalism that's taken place. Um, just about everything has been vandalised. You know, the economy, certainly. But hardly anybody is prepared to give you the time of day on that because they'll tell you, oh, you just care about money more than lives. You know. But take the health service. You know, this institution that we were all prevailed upon to, to to sacrifice, to save, or to protect it. You know, it no longer works. You know, it's hard to get a doctor's appointment now. We, we've heard about the elective surgery and how a lot of that has been cancelled because the health service has been repurposed uh, with one problem in mind. It turns out last week that the government wrote off the health service debt altogether. Um, I have a friend on Facebook whose politics does not align with mine at all. But every time we meet, and it's very occasionally that we meet in person, we always stop for a chat. Um... And he has been, incidentally, this guy is abs absolutely, he's absolutely spot on in his comments about what's going on now, this nonsense, you know. Um, he's actually one of the more sensible voices out there in the general public, you know. But I shan't mention his name. Um, but he has been expressing concerns about the sell-off of the NHS for probably years and of course you know I've been sceptical about that I don't you know I won't sell the NHS off and then the last you know um, the last attempt to get this fear going you know as part of the Brexit negotiations to say that Trump is going to buy the NHS you know I, I was sceptical and remain sceptical that that was you know ever a real possibility but we have now what happened last week and what's been happening over the course of um, the last few months. Everybody agrees that where the health service really scored was A&E. But we're starting to see examples of atrophy in A&E now. In Ireland, we're seeing you have to phone up and make an appointment to go to accident and emergency, you know. It's hardly surprising that this stuff doesn't make sense to anybody. Um, so the health service, whatever you thought about, about it before, and I could fill up a whole presentation on that alone, um, it's now being vandalised. 
you know, all, all of the small business that you had in your village or your suburb, um, they are significantly at risk. There have been a few places down the centre here that, that are gone by the look of it, which is a shame because, uh, you know, I have in the past put a few quid over the counter there. Now it's gone. And it's gone precisely at the time when there are huge amounts of QE coming in at the top. You know, um, and where's that money going to go? Well, it's going to buy all these properties that are suddenly coming up all at once. So there's a glut there. There'll, there'll be a collapse in prices. You know, the people who own those businesses are probably not going to stand a chance of starting again. You know. So it's a transfer of wealth from the the middle classes to the very rich. And so I'm angry about that. Um, I'm angry about... I'm angry about vandalism generally. I think it's one of the worst sins that can be committed. committed because people pour their heart and soul into building something. Whatever it is. You know, whether it's a statue or a business or a life, a family, you know... Um, that's human capital at work. That's people's time and effort, their dedication, their love. Um, and it's dead easy to destroy all that. It's a lot more easy than it is to build it. So that that's why I that's why that stuff angers me. And um, and I see a lot of that going on right now. Um, you know the 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 business with the uh, our treatment of old people, <laughs> the, the the very people that we were trying to protect from this. What happened? Well, the, the health service was directing old people's homes to take positive cases, with the result that. Probably a lot of old people died prematurely. Remember that the the excess deaths since the end of March that we observe, only half of them are accounted for, even on the government's figures, uh, by COVID. How did the rest of these people die? You know, we don't know for sure. But it's likely they died as a result of the measures taken on the lockdown. And, and other things, other policies that are implemented, you know, in healthcare, you know. And, you know, consider also the, the experiences of such people, you know, the, the people in the homes where they were denied the opportunity to see their loved ones because we all had to socially distance, right? And then finally when they died... They were not allowed a proper funeral. When Steve says that he thinks something's wrong, or he knows something's wrong, you know, I think that's what people are talking about when they say things like that. We've lost our humanity. You know, outside the supermarket, you know, we wouldn't assist someone anymore who has a coughing fit, you know, or call an ambulance for them you know, we'd run a mile from them and be glad when someone came to take them away and separate them from the rest of us because we're all a threat to one another. It's inhumane. And so that's what's wrong. And it is scary. Um, so, yeah, so I'm scared and angry the same way everybody else is. And I'm angry about the vandalism. The loss of life. I'm choosing my words now. And the lies. You know, when, when Matt Hancock looks you in the face through a TV camera and tells you that you're, our only hope to get back to normal is a vaccine, he's lying. Or at the very least, it's a falsehood. But 
if it's that, then, you know, man, ha Matt Hancock is being too stupid to be stupid. So I'm angry about that. I'm angry about having my intelligence insulted as well. You know? So if we're going to add things to the laundry list, I mean, that comes some way down the list of priorities. It's true. You know? Um, people say that they feel as though they are isolated, they're alone. You know, they feel as though there is no one who shares their concerns. Um, you know? And I understand that. I feel that way as well. Now, in my case, you know, I've always been a pretty solitary person and don't generally seek the company of others where others might. But here's the problem. Um, you know, the problem is that I can't function in a world that doesn't function. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not a monk. You know, I did have a few bands that I was in, one of which actually still rehearses because it would appear that at least they're kind of sensible, you know. But of course, you know, we can't go out and play anywhere because the rest of the world is crazy. And it is crazy. You know, don't don't allow yourself to be persuaded that what's going on out there is sane. It isn't. Um, you're right to worry about it. You're not wrong. Any normal person would worry about all of the things I've just mentioned. Um, but it might be helpful to remember also that confronting this kind of stuff head on is not a pleasant thing to do. And so there may be a proportion of people out there who rather than confront it head on, they'll go along to get along. And they, then it's not a question of being persuaded by it. They are probably, by and large, not likely to be uh, offensive to you. Um, but they they just regard it as, as easier to go go along to get along, as I said, you know. Um, interestingly, and it'd be interesting to know how other people feel about this. I can't do that. You know, if I feel something to be wrong, I just can't go along with it. I've I've always been pretty bad at that. You might say there's room for growth there. But there it is, I just can't go along with it. And I can't go along with this because it is wrong. Steve is right. Um, so, again, I don't know where, where this is all going to end. Um, who, who is it? The, the lady that worked for the BBC, Claire, you know, she thinks that her job might well, very well come to an end. You know, when uh, when the balloon goes up about this track and trace stuff that they want to do. Um, I suspect she might well go through with it and say, I'm done with that. I've got to find something else to do. Um that's what it's going to come to. Um, and so these things are never easy. And we didn't ask for it. It was foisted on us by... Well, by our government, really. I mean, there's no real way around this. This is government policy that's caused this. Um, and the reasons why they might have done it... Um, well, that, that's another conversation. Suffice to say that it's hard now to think that it's just incompetence. Um, so, scared and angry, those are my reasons why. Um, I'd, I'd like to pay tribute to those who have taken the time to give their various accounts already this has gone on somewhat of a long time we're about 20 minutes now um, but again I mean one of my projects is is trying to explain the world to people you know now it sounds like I understand the world well I do a bit I think um, 
I, I certainly know when I come across someone who's genuinely confused about things in a way that I'm not. And, uh, you know, so I've sought to explain my fears and the sources of anger. And I've sought to explain them in ways that help those others who, who might yet contribute in the future um, to understand why it is that they're they feel that it's just wrong and it's unjust and uh, you know even crazy it's it's every one of those things you're not alone so um i'll just sign off sign off by making a few suggestions about how you might improve the quality of your life right um turn off the bbc and the mainstream media um a about a month ago, maybe a bit more, I, I happened to be around a mate's place when we decided we were just going to get back to normal now. You know, we're going to get together, don't care. Um, you know. And he happened to have the TV on, and it was on BBC News 24. So there was, like, rolling news all the time. And it's just kind of on, you know. And uh, we, we had a bit of a chat, quite a lot of a chat, actually. That's really what happens when he and I get together. And, uh, you know, periodically, if there's a bulletin come up, we might have a look at it and see what it is. And I was actually horrified by what I saw because um, I don't watch television. Um, I haven't watched television for literally years. I mean, since I moved in here, I haven't really watched television at all. You know, the, the, the amount of TV I've watched since I've moved here, you could probably quantify it in hours in single figures you know i just got out of watching tv altogether and and but every so often i dip in and what i've noticed is that i've not been able to stomach it for longer than 30 seconds you know and um and what i saw when i went around my mate's place that time was um <laughs> horrific <laughs> you know compared to the coverage that i look at normally <clears throat> And, um, you know, one of, the, one of the things that I reflected upon was, you know, there are people that come home from work maybe or, or maybe they're home all day right now. And, you know, they watch this stuff all the time, every day. And I thought to myself, you know, what is the state of the mind of the person who, who watches this all the time? You know, it must be crippling. Um, so... My 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 recommendation is that you don't watch it at all, um, and I think you'd be surprised how much better you feel. <laughs> you know, now the real news is not pretty. It's not pretty at all. But I think what's become obvious to me over the course of this year is that it's actually better to know the truth, and it's better to find it out from people who are. You know at least sane <laughs> um so however bad it is it's 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 probably better to know about it and you know have some sort of a decent account of it rather than this apocalyptic doom and gloom that that we seem to get from the mainstream media all the time um you know so so there would be one thing and the other thing i would reiterate you know to people out there you're not alone. There are people who think like you do, who have the same concerns that you do and have noticed the same things and have the same reaction to it. You know, it's it's perfectly normal to be horrified by insanity and inhumanity. Um, and so with that, I suppose I'll sign off now and uh, uh, say so long and thanks for all the fish. <laughs>